Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to show you that there are different methods, and here is another one of those methods in which we can calculate the probability that a subject will have the disease if they test positive. So just because they test positive doesn't mean they have the disease. There's a probability associated with that. And what we saw in the previous video, that it's a ratio. In the numerator, we have all the subjects that have the disease that test positive divided by all the subjects that test positive because not all the subjects that test positive have the disease. We have a number of them that test positive that have the disease, but there's a number of them that test positive that are healthy. So it's that ratio. And of course, we would like the numerator to be almost as big as the denominator so that the probability, that ratio, gets to be close to one. We want to be as sure as possible when we test somebody positive for a disease that the person actually does have the disease. So we have another way we can do that. We have this matrix here and we're going to show you what that matrix means. In the next video we're going to show you how to actually use it. So here we have what we call the truth at the, at the top of the matrix and the test to the left of the matrix. And sometimes they have it in a different arrangement but we'll do it like this. Notice that this column represents all the ones that have the disease. This column represents all the subjects that are healthy. This row right here represents all the subjects that test positive, be it that they have the disease or be it that they are healthy. And this row right here represents all the subjects that test negative, be it that they have the disease or be it that they are healthy. So that's why we have what we call the true positives and the true negatives. The true positives are all the ones that have the disease that test positive. The true negatives are all the ones that are healthy that test negative. But there are some that are healthy that test positive. So those are called the false positives. And there are some that are, health, that are, that are diseased that test negative. So those are called the false negatives. No, notice we're going to test, well, let's call it 8,000 subjects. And so that's the total number of subjects. So over here we have the total number that tests positive and the total number that tests negative. We add those two together, that should add up to a thousand. Here we have all the ones that have the disease. Some will test positive, some will test negative, but together they add up to the total number that have the disease. In this case, just like we used in the previous video, there are 40 that have the disease, so they should have, these should add up to 40. In this column, we have all the ones that are healthy. Those that test positive, so they're false positives, they're still healthy, and those that test truly negative. Together, they add up to the total number of people who are healthy. So that's 960. Now, before we calculate what's in there, we're going to do that in the next video, we're going to label these as 1, 2, 3, and four, and now we're going to take these results. Well, we haven't calculated them yet, but we're going to take what's going to go in those boxes and stick them into the equation here. Notice that in the numerator, we want all the subjects that have the disease that test positive. Well, those are the true positives. That's number one right here, so that goes in the numerator. In the denominator, we have number one again. Those are all the ones that test positive, that have the disease, multiplied times the probability, of course, that they, they have the disease. And then we have to add to that all the ones that test positive but that are healthy. So who are those? Well that falls in this category right here. So those are all the ones that are healthy but test positive. So we add what goes into square number two there. And so notice that we can get the exact same result that we got in the last video. The probability that they have the disease when they test positive was 44.95%. If we do the problem this way, we should get 44.95% in that method as well. So what we're going to do now in the next video, we're going to show you how to calculate the contents of those, and then we're going to use that to figure out how to calculate the probability that the subject has a disease if they test positive. And that's how it's done.